joining us at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Dr. W.L. Johnson Sr. We're so grateful that you spend this time of worship with us each week, and we ask that you continue to spread the word of God by sharing this video. And also, have a blessed week. I never live another day If I never see another smiling face If I never breathe another breath Or take another step I want to say thank you If I never hear what's to be heard if I never speak another word If I never see another side Or taste another bite I want to say thank you Thank you for all that you've done for us thus far Thank you for being the God If I never take another walk And if I never have another talk If I never hear another voice Or make another choice I want to say thank you, oh Lord And if I never scare the China walk or take a flight out and go see the Taj Mahal. If I never find a special friend, if I search the world over and the back again, Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us, thus far. Thank you for being the God. If I never hear what's to be heard And if I never speak another word If I never see another side Or taste another bite I want to say thank you Thank you for all that you've done for us Thank you for all Thank you for being the God
made it possible for you to give your tithes and offerings by mail online at the church's website, www.mountziononline.org, and in person on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I want to thank God for this opportunity to share with you again. And at the same time, we want to wish all of you a happy new year. I also want to inform you that uh, we will be serving communion Sunday when you come out, and I know everybody want to get communion the first Sunday in the new year, so we'll be looking forward to seeing you. And at the same time, I want to take this opportunity to express my deepest appreciation to all of the members of Mount Zion and to others who have given us your love and support across this year. And we're hoping and praying that, uh, uh, that next year will be a better year. I'd like to share with you this morning from two selected pastors of scripture. Uh, one is found in the Old Testament and the other one is in the New Testament. In the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter and beginning at the 13th through the 16th verses, these words are recorded. These all died in faith not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that said such things clearly, uh, uh, plainly, that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country, from whence they came out, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, and for he has prepared for them a city. I want to read this passage coming from the book of Job, the uh, 13th chapter and the fifth verse, very familiar. And he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. I want to talk to you a few minutes today from the subject, hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. You may lose everything else you have, but whatever you do, hold on to your faith. As we come today to celebrate the new year, we must remember that we are living in some most unprecedented times. Uh, history has, uh, we have never experienced the problems in history that we are facing now. We are experiencing problems on every hand. We look around and we, uh, we are dealing with the COVID-19, the pandemic. We are experiencing hurricanes and tornadoes, floods, fire. C crime is at a all time high. Inequality, families falling apart, divisions, and leaders can't work together. Even nature itself seems to be strange at these times. And nothing seems to be normal. At this time, if we ever needed faith, we need to have it now. Many people have lost uh, their loved ones. They have lost their jobs. They have lost homes. Some people are struggling just to put food on the table. Children can't go to school. Sometimes some of our businesses are gone forever. But in spite of all this, I want to challenge you today to let's hold on to our faith. A 
a better day is on its way. If there have ever been a time we needed to pray and have faith and, and patience, it is now. For God uses different methods in dealing with his people, and God can use technology and science coupled with prayer to bring us through what we are experiencing today. We must hold on to our faith and keep in mind that uh, whatever we go through, that God is in trouble. Uh, we don't know God's plan, uh, or if he will deliver us, uh, but we do know one thing, that he's able. Uh, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know how uh, 2021 20, will be, uh, but we know one thing, we know who holds the future. As we reach the point in history where only uh, God can deliver us. And, 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 and at the same time, I want to remind you that God uh, uh, can use humanity of mankind to bring us through this period in which we are experiencing. God has allowed these things to happen in our lives uh, for a reason. Uh, the world has gotten so far from the principles of God, the, 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 the guidelines and the principles that God has laid down for us. Uh, we have moved far from these principles. God has given us the uh, Bible as a road map to live by. Uh, and we are to follow the principles that are laid down in the Bible. And when we fail to follow these principles, we are end up on the wrong road. And sometimes we end up going further than we want to. And we must keep in mind that as we uh, journey through this period of history that we are only pilgrims on this earth. We, we are only passing through. And let's keep in mind that this place is not our home. Uh, we are just passing through. We are pilgrims and strangers traveling through this borrowed land. We are on our way somewhere. And we, we must not become too self-satisfied uh, what we are experiencing here on earth. Paul said that if I have hope only in this life, I am of all men a most miserable creature. And I want to say that we must look beyond what we are experiencing now for there is a better day and a better place. The patriarchs of old had a uh, they had a visionary faith. They had a working faith, and then they had a a enduring faith. When we look at the scripture, we see the following: their faith was visionary. And we look at verse sixteen. He said, "Now they desire a better country." Uh, they had a vision every faith. They were looking for something better. And I think all of us ought to be, even though we may be getting along uh, uh, well and, and, and everything may be falling in place, but uh, uh, we must keep in mind that that is a better place. And God said, and he said, look, uh, not only is there a better place, he said, but it's the place where uh, God is not ashamed uh, of us, we are not ashamed to call him our God, and and he's not ashamed of us because he has prepared a place for us. Uh, we all are looking for a better country, a better uh, a, a place, a heavenly place. And Jesus said the other day, he said that Abraham uh, reached that place. He said, look, and uh, when he reached it, he was satisfied. Uh, he rejoiced in that day. As Christians, we must look for a better place for in John, the 14th chapter, uh, he says, let not your heart be troubled. He said, because if you believe in God, you believe in me. And he said, look, if you look to me, he said, don't be uh, troubled in heart. He said, look, I have a mansion for you. And I have prepared it. I'm going away. And when I Get things ready, he said, I'll come back and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there ye may be also. And I want to tell you that uh, we must have faith, but don't get discouraged if God doesn't answer your prayer. 
like you want him to. Uh, uh, Sometimes we pray and uh, when God doesn't answer our prayer, we feel like there's something wrong with us, something wrong with our faith, uh, uh, or, or whatever it may be. But I want to tell you that God hears every prayer we pray. Uh, he doesn't answer them the way we want him to answer, but he hears, and he does answer our prayer. We must keep the faith even if we, uh, God doesn't answer our prayer. We must keep the faith. We must continue to look forward. We must continue to keep our eyes on the prize. And 1 Corinthians 5 and 1 says, For we know uh, that when this earthly house of this tabernacle it is all, he said, look, we have another building, a house not made with hand. You've got to have faith. You, you haven't seen that house. You don't know what it looked like, but through faith, you uh, have received it. Uh, for faith is seeing what you can't see with your physical eyes, going where you can't go. you got to have faith. Second that. There must be a growing faith. In order to have faith, uh, you must have an object. Faith must have an object. You must have something to have faith in. Now, a lot of people got faith. A lot of Christians got faith, but their faith is in the wrong place. Uh, they believe in other things and people more than they do God. But we got to have an object of our faith, and our faith must be centered on God Almighty uh, for uh, for if we have faith in him, uh, the old patriarchs, they saw the promise of God and they were thankful and they were persuaded and they embraced what God had given them. They even confessed that they were pilgrims and strangers traveling through this borrowed land. The question is, how do we get faith? Well, the Bible tells us how we get faith. You don't go down to the drugstore and buy faith. You don't get faith by just reading or, or watching television. But he said, faith coming by hearing. And, and hearing come by the word of God. Uh, we must have uh, that visionary faith. That faith that looks out and look beyond and see things that you, you really don't see with your natural eye. And then secondly, that must be a working faith. And see, faith is no good without work. Faith and works go together. We must have faith, uh, but we also must work to make uh, uh, our faith become a reality. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, prophets and these uh, uh, forerunners, they didn't just have faith and then go home and sat down, but they became actively seeking faith. If the children of Israel... They had faith that God would deliver them, but they didn't just go sit down and didn't do nothing. They, they, they moved forward. They, they, they kept moving forward and not backwards because they knew that something was up ahead waiting for them. Uh, they, they sought out for the promised land. They, uh, they went up and they looked and they, uh, they were willing to leave their possession. They were willing to give up what they already had in order to reach out for what was before them. And I want to tell, uh, tell you that uh, Paul tells us in the book of Romans, he said, look, uh, uh, if, if, if you really want to go forward, he said, be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the neuron of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable will of God. We have to give up sometimes in order to move forward. Paul said, look, uh, uh, you have to give it up sometime. You have to give it up sometime. Faith must be working. There must be a working faith. Uh, not only must we have faith in God, uh, but we must have enough faith to get out and, and, and move forward and, and challenge and, and try to uh, reach that which God has provided for us. Because if you don't, Amen. You don't go out and get it. You may, may come up short. Fourthly and lastly, faith was an enduring faith. Enduring faith. Simply stated, they kept their minds and their thoughts on the promised land. 
uh, uh, you see, uh, we, we have reached a period in history now. We, we, we are at a period in, uh, in, in, in our day when really uh, uh, playing church is over. Now, it's time, if, if you're ever going to get real, now is the time to get real because time is winding up. We see a lot of things happening, and we, we don't know why they're happening, but, but, but God has a reason for allowing the things that happen to us that are happening. And, 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 and I want to tell you, I, I don't care what you do, uh, there's a, 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 a cycle that we're going to have to go through before we get to the end. The greatest tragedy today is we, we think it is, COVID-19, but that's not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragic is to die in this world and then not know Jesus. The greatest tragedy is to die and not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now is the time to get it together. We don't have a one time. We only go through and, and, and we're going through this period of land, but we only go through one time. And I want to tell you, you don't get a chance to rehearsal. Uh, you must uh, prepare yourself and get ready because you don't know what's coming down the line. Uh, Job tells us to hold on as I come to a close. Hold on. Uh, he said, though they slay me, yet will I trust in God. What Job is saying is, no matter what come in life, uh, whether I survive or whether I don't, uh, I'm going to keep my faith in God. And we know Job lost everything. Uh, he lost his wealth. Uh, he was the richest man that ever lived, and he lost his wealth. He had some fine family, some children. He lost all of his children. His friends turned against him. He lost his health. He had to sit in ashes to keep the flies off his afflicted body. But in all of that, your wife came to him and said, why don't you curse God and die? But Job said, you sound foolish. You don't sound like my wife. Uh, but he said, uh, all of my appointed time, he said, I'm going to wait until my chains come. I want to tell you, let's hold on to our faith. Even though sometimes look like uh, the road get rough and rocky. But if you hold on, you can make it to the end. But Paul told me to tell you that he decided one day that he was going to hold on. Uh, he said, uh, uh, nothing can separate me from the love of God. He said, not life, angels, principalities. Powers are things, presence of things to come. He said, not height, not death, not anything or any creature shall separate me from the love of God. Two things you ought to have in your life. You ought to have love and you ought to have faith. For I hear him saying in uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1 and 12, he said, for these cause I suffer these things. But nevertheless, he said, I am not ashamed, for I believe and, uh, and there's power, and I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. I want to tell you that as I close, I, I, I remember uh, the song that says, and you all right, a song that says that, we ought to hold on to God's unchanging hand. He said, time is filled with swift temptation. Nothing on earth move can stand. Build your hope on things eternal. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I don't know about you, but I'm going to hold on. I don't care how the storms come. I don't care how the wind blows. I don't care how rough it gets. I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Whatever you do, we don't know what uh, uh, 2021 going to bring. But I tell you, hold on. 
hold on. If you hold on, God can see you through. He can make a way for you out of no way. He's all right. God bless you. May he sanctify and keep you. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'd never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way and I'm growing much. Oh! 
I want to ask you a question. Are you saved? The greatest tragedy that anybody could have at this day and time is to die and not uh, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, the coronavirus is not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragedy is to die and not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We extend an invitation to you. If you are not saved, God gave his only son, Jesus, and Jesus gave his life on Calvary, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. All you have to do is to believe in God, believe in Jesus Christ, believe that he is Jesus, the son of God, and believe that he died for your sin. And the Bible said, thou shalt be saved. We extend to you an invitation. If you are not saved, we're going to ask that you will call, call my number 601-859-4267 and we will be glad to uh, accept your confession. Maybe you are out of fellowship with the church and you need to renew your membership. We also invite you, just give us a call. We'll be glad to talk with you. Or maybe you're in this community and you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home. Just give us a call. To the new safety standards, we encourage everyone to stay safe and healthy by practicing social distancing, staying at least six feet apart from other individuals, and washing and sanitizing your hands for at least 20 seconds. Us on social media for church news and more. Thank you for worshiping with us.